And I think sometimes you and I have a tendency to, to judge people when we don't know the whole story. Oftentimes we judge people without having all the facts and maybe we look at them from a certain light because we live in a certain culture or we, we look at things from a certain set of glasses. I wonder how many of us judge people when we have skeletons in our own closets. Laurie Beth Jones is an author that's been around for mercy about 30 years and in uh, one of her books called Jesus Life Coach, she said, the fruit merely is a manifestation of what is inside the tree all How many of us tend to you know, be pick, pick, pick on people when you know, we really should not be too heavy on them? Lori Beth Jones said in, a, in another book called Jesus in Blue Jeans, which I highly recommend. It's a great book. It says, a wise person does not fear the edges and fringes, but studies them. Indeed, he or she is often in them working to make you change. If you and I want happen. to change the culture, if you and I want to change just people in our own family, or we want to impact, it is probably a be better word. When we want to impact people in our own lives, we can't expect them to come to us all the time. Oftentimes we need to hang around with them to impact their lives in a big, big way. And, oh, again, I love Lori Beth Jones. She said one time, she said, Jesus did not waste his time judging others. He said he saw judging others as a major energy leak. He stated many times that he did not come to judge, but that he came to help. He did not spend one minute on the demolition crew. He spent his energy on, listen, creation and restoration. I know you know people, and I certainly know people who have a tendency of tearing other people down. When that's not the example that Jesus taught us in the Bible, that he came to restore, to build other people up. Lori Beth Jones once again says, judgment halts progress. When we judge, we inhibit our forward motion because we're always looking back at what people used to be and what they used to do and the mistakes they used to make instead of looking forward based on what they can do or what they can accomplish. So when you regularly walk with people, listen, when you regularly walk with people, you tend to understand their pain. You tend to feel their pain. So the farther you are away from people in your life, the less likely, likely you are to understand what they're going through. Now, Forbes magazine had a uh, great article about people who are leaders and some of the characteristics of those people who lead. Again, you don't need a title as Mark Sanborn said, you don't need a title to lead, but you need to have certain characteristics in your life in order to lead. So a few of these characteristics that Forbes magazine shared. You have to have consistently strong work ethic. It says that great leaders despise false promises and people that create lots of unnecessary noise to get attention. I think most of the time that you and I forget that leaders, true leaders, are really there to serve other people. The article goes on to say that people are not people who lead in any form are, are not afraid to take risks and admit wrongdoing. When you mess up, just say you mess up. By the way, everybody messes up. It goes on to say that powerful uh, people have long lasting impact, meaning that they, they, they don't just impact people once, they continue to impact people over and over again. Keith Cuisenberry uh, mentioned that, that people are attracted to stories. In fact, there's a study that says that when, um, when a teacher tells a story to a group of people or a student, the wavelengths of the storyteller and the people who listen to the story are almost the same. It's very interesting. So stories connect us with the hearts so of stories other people. create connection. Think about that. Stories create connection. Michael Rogers shares a story about the importance of, of integrity in people who lead other people. Again, I'm not talking about you having to be an executive at some company. Uh, you can be right in your own home or right in your own workplace if you want to lead people or impact people. It says, in the 1930s, there was a young boy who had become addicted and obsessed with eating sugar. So his mom decided to help and took a long and hot journey with her son, walking many miles and hours under the, scor uh, under the scorching sun. She finally reached Gandhi and asked him to tell her, to, her son to stop eating sugar. It wasn't good for his health. So Gandhi replied, I cannot tell him that. 
but you may bring him back in a few weeks and then I will talk to him. The mom was confused and upset and took the boy home. Two weeks later, she came back and this time Gandhi looked directly at the boy and said, quote, boy, you should stop eating sugar. It is not good for your health. The boy nodded his head and, and promised he wouldn't and the boy's mom was puzzled. She asked, why didn't you tell him that two weeks ago when I brought him here to see you? Gandhi smiled and he nodded and said, Mother, two weeks ago I was eating a lot of sugar myself. We're talking about integrity, integrity. we're talking about people who, who uh, practice what they preach. So the best way to see where people are coming from, listen, the best way to see where people are coming from is to go and visit where the people have been. Let me say that again. The best way to see where people are coming from is to go and visit where the people have been. That means to invest your time, your energy, your talents in the lives of people that have struggled in a variety of different ways. To place yourself in their shoes. That word's called empathy. To place yourself in their situations that will allow you, uh, allow you to share their pain and to feel their pain. The late John Wanamaker was the king of retail, and, and one day he, while walking through his store in Philadelphia, he, he noticed a customer behind the counter, I mean, a customer who needed help, and not paying any attention, the customer service reps were having fun and laughing without really caring about the customers at all. So without a word, this, the owner of this place slipped behind the counter and waited on the customer himself. And, then he quietly handed the purchase to the salesperson to be wrapped, and then he went on his way. And then later, the owner of this place uh, was quoted as saying, quote, I learned 30 years ago it was foolish to scold. He says, I have enough trouble overcoming my own limitations without fretting over the fact that God has not seen fit to distribute evenly the gift of intelligence. Kind of a silly story, but oftentimes you and I just need to step up and do instead of griping and complaining about people who don't. A businessman was highly cr critical of his com com competitors. I mean, he was just really nasty, the story says. And, and uh, it says, why? They are the dirtiest windows in town. He, he was looking at all the other store owners around him. I said, man, they got some dirty windows. Fellow businessmen, people grew tired of the man's continual criticism and nitpicking comments about the windows. So one day over coffee, the businessman carried the subject just a little too far. Before leaving, a fellow store owner suggested that the man get his own windows washed. He followed the advice, and the next day at coffee, he exclaimed, he says, you know, I can't believe it. As soon as I washed my windows, my competitor must have cleaned his too. You should see them shine. Well, you know what? If you can read between the lines here, the other people's windows were clean, it was the other guy, the guy that was always picking a negative. His glasses, his windows were the ones that were dirty. I wonder how many times you and I have fallen into that, that we look at other people and their problems when, you know what, we need to check our glasses first. We need to look in the mirror first before we go picking on other people.